Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at principle of step down chopper. So let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a step down chopper. If you carefully observe, we have three fundamental components that is switch an inductor and a diode. Of course, you also have source and the load. One important observation here, the switch that is generally used are MOSFETs or IGBTs for choppers and we don't usually prefer SCRs for chopper circuits because you need an additional commutation circuit for turning it off. Whereas in case of MOSFET and IGBT, you will be able to control it with the help of the gate terminals directly. Now what is a step down chopper? Step down chopper fundamentally means that you are stepping down the voltage from one value to another. So we have seen that choppers are basically DC to DC converters. So step down in the sense, if you're supplying 20 volt and you want 10 volt, you're going to step down the voltage, isn't it? So the reduction of voltage from the supply that is available basically is called a step down. And that is why this circuit is called a step down chopper. Now, how to analyze these type of circuits? So we'll follow a pattern and the pattern will remain the same for most of the circuits that we are going to observe. So we will consider something like what happens during turn on and what happens during turn off. In case of a rectifier circuit, we saw what happens during positive and negative half cycle, isn't it? For circuit operation here, we will be considering what happens during turn on and what happens during turn off. So during turn on, what happens is that we will be switching basically we will be giving the gate pulse to the mosfet or igbt that is there and consequently the switch will be shorted as a result it is connected in a short circuit fashion and it is forward biased consequently what is happening is if you carefully observe since plus is connected to this point that is the cathode of diode it is reverse biasing the diode and it is acting as open circuit so the current starts flowing directly from this path to the load through this path and comes back to the source through this path. This is basically open circuited. So during this process, the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus, and consequently the load current I out will slowly start to increase because that is when you have supplied the DC power supply to it, isn't it? So I out will slowly start increasing. The reason is because the inductor is charging and I L and I out are same in this case because they're connected in series. The same current will be flowing through this entire circuit. So as a result, I out will slowly start to increase and we'll be getting V out, which is over here at this point. Now what happens during turn off? During turn off, we will be switching off the switch. Yes. As a result, it will be acting as open circuit. Consequently, the energy that was previously stored in the inductor, we know that the inductor does not allow sudden change in the power supply. Basically, it will reverse its polarity and ensure that the current is still flowing in the same direction as it was flowing previously. So it will ensure the same current, same direction of the current will be flowing as it was flowing previously according to the property of Lenz law. So consequently, what is happening? If you carefully observe minus is connected to the cathode of diode D and plus is connected to the anode of diode D as a result diode is forward biased and the current is flowing through this path. So this is the path where the current is flowing. But the important observation here is the energy that was stored by the inductor previously now will be discharged through the resistor R because you don't have any other element. So whatever you have stored, you are just dissipating it through this resistor R and consequently the current through the resistor is dropping. So the load current is basically decreasing in nature. And we are getting output voltage to be equal to zero over here because you're shorting this point. Basically, if you're considering this as the load, you're basically having a short circuit over here. So the output voltage will be equal to zero, isn't it? So V out in this case will be equal to zero. Very, very important observation. Now we'll take a look at the waveforms and try to correlate how the circuit operated. So we are considering a DC voltage source Vs with a certain amount of magnitude and we have V out. So what we were doing during the turn on cycle. So this is nothing but T on. If we consider from this point, we are going to turn on. So till the point where the switch is turned on, the V out will be equal to Vs over here. So the V out is equal to Vs because whatever you're supplying will is appearing across the load terminal provided considering negligible amount of drop across the switch, isn't it? So as a result, it is just following the supply voltage waveform from this point till this point. 
and at this point let us say this is the t on period and from that point what is happening now we will be turning off the switch from this point so the output voltage was going to zero that is what we have seen over here isn't it so as a result the output is zero so this is nothing but t on and this is nothing but t off and overall is nothing but t again the cycle repeats in this particular case basically what you are doing you are just chopping off the source voltage waveform vs so you are going to get a waveform like this isn't it now what is the current waveform we were discussing that during turn on the current was increasing because the inductor slowly starts to charge as a result during t on it is increasing and during t off the current that was stored in the inductor will be dissipated through the resistor r as a result it is decreasing in nature in this particular fashion so that's why you're getting a waveform of this nature now we have seen the analysis basically the principle of how a step down chopper works now let's take a look at some important expressions that we need to derive so what is the average output voltage so the logic behind deriving this expression is similar to that what we did in the rectifier circuits similar to that we will be finding out the average output voltage so what is v out in this case let's find out v out so v out average fundamentally by the definition we know that it is 1 by time period 0 to t v out of t dt isn't it now in this case 1 by t we are going to consider only till this point because the output voltage is anyway zero from this cycle to this cycle isn't it so the limit is zero to t on zero to t on and what we are getting magnitude is nothing but vs isn't it so whatever we are supplying is what we are chopping so vs dt now one important thing we know that duty cycle is equal to t on by t this we have seen in our previous video isn't it so what is t on t on can be written as t times the duty cycle that is dt isn't it so consequently this can be rewritten as 1 by t 0 to dt vs into dt isn't it now we have vs we can be taking it outside vs by t that is integration of one is nothing but t in this case and substituting the lower and upper limits you'll be getting dt so t and t will be cancelled so v out average is nothing but vs times t so v out average largely depends on the duty cycle that we are selecting so basically it depends on the t on ratio of t on by the total time period so that is a very important expression now what happens to the rms output voltage again fundamentally by definition we know that v out rms is equal to square root of 1 by t again i'll be writing directly 0 to dt v out square of t into dt that is equal to square root of v out square so this v out can be written as vs isn't it because we see we have seen that the magnitude will be vs so we can write it as 0 to dt vs square into dt now this is nothing but vs square by t you can keep it under roots into dt t and t will be cancelled and you will be left out with taking vs square outside you will be getting v out rms is equal to vs times root d very very important expression so there will be problems related to this and you need to know what's the average and rms output voltage to solve those numericals i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of principle of step down chopper in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section please do post your feedbacks of how this video was thanks for watching stay tuned thank you